What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next example. And before getting into this example, a couple of quick things I wanna mention. Number one, this example here, it's gonna be dealing with interest payments and interest tax shields. And I've already covered this in videos before, earlier in this chapter. So if you haven't watched those, make sure you do because through this example, I'm gonna be going through these concepts a little bit quicker, perhaps bringing in formulas that I went through in more detail, intuitively how they work in that previous video. So just make sure you've watched that before watching this. And another thing is you don't have to write all this out. It's already printed out for you or typed out for you. And it's in the PDF file at the beginning of the section. You could just print that out. You don't have to write this out. And if you're watching this on YouTube, in the description box, there will be a link that takes you to the course website where you can find that PDF. So what are we working with here? We have a company's forecasted debt interest and interest tax shield given below. So in this table here, all these figures, by the way, they're in thousands. So notice in 2021, actually in every year, the debt is staying consistent. So it's 6,600, but because it's in thousands, if we multiply this by a thousand, it's really 6.6 .6 million, 6 million, 600,000. And on that debt, the company has to pay interest. And so the interest payments are here. They're not changing. So that interest rate is the same. And then because that company is paying interest, they could deduct that interest on the income statement, which is gonna lower that earnings before taxes. And so there's gonna be an interest tax shield. And again, I went over how an interest tax shield works intuitively in the lecture videos. So, we have that, and then we're told that the company then realizes it has to expand in 2023, and it's gonna take on 10.2 million of further debt. And we're assuming the debt will be borrowed at the end of the year, so at the end of 2023. So really, the debt values that are gonna change in this chart, basically, the, all the values that are gonna change in this chart is in 2024, and 2025 because the debt's being borrowed at the end of 2023. So in 2023, that debt, that current debt is still going to be there. At the end, they're going to borrow. So at the beginning of 2024 and throughout 2024, that new debt figure is going to be there. It's going to be the current debt figure plus that additional debt figure right there. Now, if three fourths of this additional debt, this 10.2 million, will have the same interest rate as the current debt, while the rest has an interest rate that is 2% greater, and the tax rate stays the same, what will be the new interest payment and interest tax shield starting in 2024? So as I mentioned, these are the two years that are gonna be affected. That's the part of the table that's gonna be affected. Everything else is gonna stay the same. So a couple of things. First off, notice that we're not given any tax rates and any interest payment or uh, any interest rates. Right? Sometimes you'll be given that in a question, sometimes you won't. But notice that we can figure out what those values are from this table here. So we know that an interest expense or an interest payment. I think I actually used expense in the lecture video, so I'll put that as well. Both of those mean the same thing. What's this equal to? Well, it's equal to the total debt, or in this case, it's called the long-term debt that the company has times the interest rate. Pretty simple. You have debt, you're paying interest a certain rate of interest on that, and that's going to give you the amount that you have to pay in dollar terms. So notice how the interest is staying consistent, the debt is staying consistent, so we can just plug in 429 here. We could plug in 6,600 over here, and we could solve for x. We could solve for that interest rate. Dividing, these are both multiplying, so to isolate for this x, we would divide both sides by 6,600, so X would be 429 over 6,600, which would give us what? 0 
or 6.5%. So that's what the current interest rate is on the debt. And we're going to have to use that when dealing with that additional debt in terms of finding what that new interest is going to be. Right, so I'll write over here interest rate uh, is six and a half percent. Now, what else do we need? Well, we're going to get the new interest, and from that, we're going to have to calculate the interest tax shield. And how do we calculate that? We need the tax rate. Notice in the question, we weren't given the tax rate, but with this information, we can figure out what the tax rate is going to be because basically, if you remember from the lecture videos, the interest tax shield, it's equal to the what? It's equal to the interest payment or the interest expense times the tax rate, whatever tax rate that company whatever tax bracket they're in, right? This is the formula that we went over in detail. And so notice that interest tax shield is staying constant. Interest has been constant. So we could figure out what the uh, tax rate's gonna be. And we're told in the question that tax rate's gonna stay constant throughout as well. So that's the tax rate we're gonna be using to calculate that new interest tax shield in 2024 and 2025. So the interest uh, tax shield 154.44. Now again, as I mentioned, sometimes you'll be given this information, but sometimes you won't be. You'll have to find out yourself. And so the tougher way to go is to find it out yourself. So that's why I wanted to do that in this question and not give you the rates just in case you run into something like this. So again, isolating for this X, divide both sides by 429. So we have um, 154. 0.44 divided by 429, and that would give us 0 0.36 or 36%, right? So the tax rate is equal to 36%. And we're gonna need that again to calculate that interest tax shield. And so now we have enough information to deal with that additional 10.2 million of debt and how it's going to affect this table. Now, what we're told about the 10.2 million, and I'm actually just gonna write out that full amount. So 10.2 million, 10 million, 200,000. We're told that three fourths of this additional debt that we're taking on is gonna have the same interest rate as the current debt, so six and a half percent. So three-fourths or 75% of this is going to have the same interest rate, that new debt we're taking on. So to calculate that, three-fourths times this or 0.75 times this would give you 7650000 So this amount, the interest rate is going to be 6.5%. And then the remaining amount of this, the rest, the 25%, you could just take this, subtract this, or you could take 10.2 million, multiply it by 0.25, you would end up with 2,550,000. And we're told that this portion of the debt is going to be is gonna have an interest rate that's 2% higher than the current interest rate. So the current interest rate is 6.5%, so that means this debt over here, its interest is going to be 8.5%. So you gotta be careful here. And so we know, we can actually fill it in now, the long-term debt portion What's it going to be? Well, it's going to be the new amounts. Uh, yeah, I'll just fill them over here. So the new amounts here for the long-term debt, it's going to be the 6,600. Now, again, this is like 
be careful with the zeros here with these tables right this is all in thousands so this is 6.6 .6 million 6 million 600 thousand what we would do is we would just add that total amount onto that and so that would give us what uh, 16800 thousand right that's what the new long-term debt is going to be but if we keep it in that same format in the thousands then this is going to end up being 16800 like that right so that's what the new long-term debt is going to be for 2024 and 2025 we're just adding that 10.2 million however this interest payment here is going to be different it's not just going to be six and a half percent of that because there's that new part of the debt that is at a higher rate so what we can do on the side here i'm going to take this entire debt and show you how it's broken down so we have the current 6.6 .6 million that's at six and a half percent so if we multiply that by 0 0.065 we're going to end up with that current interest payment of 429 thousand so that's the interest payment on that portion of the debt then a portion of the additional debt we're taking on so the seven million six hundred and fifty thousand that's going to have that same interest rate of 0 0.065 and then that remaining portion the two million five hundred and fifty thousand of the debt is going to have an interest rate of 8.5 percent so we're going to multiply that by 0 0.085 to get the portion of the interest payment for that portion of the debt and when you do those two calculations you'd end up getting these two figures over here right so the total of these is going to be the total interest payment of the company so if we add these up here we would end up with one million 143,000. So that there is the total new interest payment of the company. And then if we put it in this table, because it's in thousands, if we divide this by a thousand, just get rid of these three zeros here, what this value would be would be 1,143. And then the tax shield is actually very easy. It's just that total. So the interest tax shield. It's just going to be that total interest payment. 1,143,000 multiplied by the tax rate of 36%. So 0.36 of that. And when you do that calculation, you'd end up with... Um, $411,480. So that's the new interest tax shield. And then if we want to take this and put it here, we would just divide this by a thousand. So we just move the decimal over by three and we'd have um, 411.48. 411.48, like that. Right, and that's it for the question. That's the new interest payment in 2024 and 2025, and then that is the new interest tax shield. So first we had to find out what the actual interest rate was and the tax rate was from this information. And then that additional debt we had to break up into three-fourths and one-fourth. The three-fourths had the same interest rate that we calculated, and then the other one-fourths had an interest rate of 2% greater than this one, so 8.5%. And then we calculated those interest payment portions with all of these portions of the long-term debt, added those up, that's the new interest payment, took the interest payment, multiplied by the tax rate to get the interest tax shield.